I'd been working at Meritor Hospital and got fired for taking home one of the surgery scrub uniforms. Got pissed off. I walked down to Ray Kettner Music on State Street and there was a, a wanted ad for a drummer in a band that was recording original music. I called up, it was Duke Erickson. And I had one practice with them and they called me the next day and said, do you want to join our band? The band started writing a lot of original music and I wanted to record it. We really didn't know anything about making a record, but we figured it out. We just decided we were gonna go and record in a studio these songs, and we rehearsed them like crazy and just went in and laid them down, and just did it all on our own dime. Designed the covers ourselves, stuffed the records ourselves, and uh, put them on sale, whoever would take them. It somehow legitimizes you in people's eyes when you actually have a record. Boat was just Spooner's label, and we were all involved. Duke was very involved in the design of the jacket. Butch was very involved in the recording and mixing of, of the music. It was just our own label, but I think people thought we actually had a deal, you know? To me, it was a learning experience about how to actually make drums sound good and make guitars sound good and to mix it, a record. But the whole time I kept thinking, we can do this ourselves. And rather than saving up our money and going into these studios, what if we just bought our own gear? And at that point, Steve Marker was our roadie and he had been to some of the sessions that we've been recording in other studios. And somehow, I don't really know where that conversation took place, Steve and I decided, let's actually open up our own recording studio. It probably happened at the plaza after we drank three or four pitchers of beer. The very first space that we moved into, the Gishol building on East Wash, was this giant warehouse. And we rented about a 900 square foot, maybe a 1,000 square foot space on the second floor. We felt like there were no rules. You know, we really felt like we're just going to go find bands and bring them in and start recording them. We went to the Mezo Egg Company out in Middleton and bought 1,000 egg flats for 50 bucks. And then Steve and I and our friends super glued them to the walls, all 1,000 of them. They'd get maybe a, a one six pack of beer and a bag of some potato chips, and then call like 20 people and say, we have beer and chips. Why don't you come over and help us out with our cool new recording studio? And so people would go over there and there'd, there'd be no beer and there'd be no chips. I applied many egg cartons to the walls of Gishol. That's right. I was actually a carpenter at that point, I believe. Or was I? No, I wasn't. Was I? The control room in the original studio in Gishol was pretty bad. It was a small L-shaped room with a tiny little window to look out into the tracking room. Acoustically, a nightmare. We inherited that space when we went in there. There was never any acoustic design, but that room really did suck. <laughs> We were the first band to record at Smart um, in, let's say, in 1982. The glue on the egg cartons was still drying when Tar Babies came in to do their first session. Didn't smell very good. We were wiring like the last 48 hours before they came in to start the session. Steve would wire something and we'd start listening to it. It goes, sounds pretty good, right? And I'd look at him and go, yeah, I think it sounds pretty good. But we weren't quite sure, you know. Those first couple years, the recording chain we had was so crude and, and lo-fi that uh, I don't think it would have mattered if we had a really hi-fi sound and control room. Are you ready to rock? 
It was good timing when we started Samara because there was a scene bursting in Madison of all these indie bands that also had a do-it-yourself spirit and did not care about getting signed to a major label. They wanted to record a 7-inch 45 and put it out on Bone Air Records or whatever one of the local labels were. A lot of them had barely practiced enough to even learn their craft on their instrument, but it didn't matter. You know, they wanted to write a song and make a noise and capture that. Steely Dan wasn't coming into Smart Studios. Mech Mench and Killdozer and Tar Babies were coming in, and they were raw, scruffy, grungy, dirty sounding bands. Later. We got some CDs and t shirts to sell. You can sign our mailing list. Come talk to